so for me, springtime, early spring especially, and usually the entire season is my time of year for diving back into historical fiction. I am especially a huge fan of Plantagenet and Tudor England stuff. I also really want to read more about the Victorian era. I actually want to get into some Jane Eyre eventually, um, because believe it or not, as much as I love books, I, me being not a huge romance person, I have never really read any of Jane Eyre. I'm familiar with some of the stories, but that being said, for some reason, spring every year is historical fiction season for me. And so while I am finishing up Unbirthday, the Alice in Wonderland Twisted Tale, you will still be getting my book review on that very soon. I am loving it, but I just had like the biggest historical fiction book haul I have ever done in my entire life. And I am so, so excited, you guys. Ugh. Okay, I acquired these books from a combination of places. One, and I was going to open it on camera, but it's really loud, but thrift books. Um, if you have not somehow heard of thrift books, like seriously, I, I literally just got like an entire book series on there for under $20. So yeah. Um, now to be fair, I'm going to go through the book series I got. And then I got like a few stragglers here that are not part of the series, but that I want to talk about, um, because they're part of this massive book haul I did now. The book series that I got and I'm very excited about, I have read about two and a half of the books in this series um, so far, and I, excuse me, I'm so sorry, my nose, um, but I have read two and a half of the books in this series so far, and the other ones I have not read. I also have not necessarily read them in order, or the ones that I did read, I didn't necessarily read in order, so... Yeah, I'm really excited that I now own the entire series because also the ones that I have read, it's been literally years, um, like probably six or seven years at least since I read them. So first up, this one I actually is not part of my book haul. I bought this one. I rebought, I should say, this one a year ago. I used to have some of the, I didn't, no, I didn't rebuy this one. I'd never owned this one because this is one I've never read. This is the first book in the Plantagenet series by Philippa Gregory, um, The Lady of the Rivers. This is about um, Jaquetta, who is the mother of Elizabeth Woodville. Um, I don't know much about Jaquetta except for the fact that I know that she was accused of witchcraft at least, I think, twice, maybe three times in her life. I'm not 100% sure. I've never really read a whole lot on her individually. I did some research because I'm a big fan of the shows on stars that were done off of this book series. Um, I found out about the series like very shortly after I had just discovered like the book series. Um, and I think for the most part, they did a pretty good job. Um, and so, yeah, I did some research on her because the way that I read historical fiction is like I'll read the book that's like a, a, whatever section of history that covers and then I'll go and do the research. And that's actually how I've learned a lot about certain segments of history that um, I haven't gone on research binges on my own for. Um, oh, that's cool. I love finding random stickers of things in thrift books. So yeah, so this one I actually rebought a year ago. I never got to read it because my life got really crazy. Um, so I'm going to start with this one now because part of my intent in buying the entire series was to read it through in the like proper historical timeline. And I have read a, more Philippa Gregory than probably any other historical fiction author so far, although I'm really excited to get into some Alice and Weir eventually. Um, I have some of her books here too that I'm going to talk about in a second, but the next book in the series that I just bought is The White Queen. Um, this one is of course about Elizabeth Woodville. Um, Elizabeth Woodville was the, um, the mother of Elizabeth of York, who is basically like the, the wife of, you know what? I'm not going to give y'all a history lesson. Okay. You can Google Elizabeth Woodville. This video is going to be way too long if I try to give a in-depth history lesson on every one of these amazing people. So 
Um, but yeah, Elizabeth Woodville, it goes over her life. Um, this actually, I will say this, this was the first book that I ever read in the Plantagenet series. And it made me absolutely fall in love with this time period of history. This book alone. Because before that, all I really knew was things that I learned about in my history class. So, um, yeah. I also love how both Jaquetta and, um, and Elizabeth, uh, but basically in their line, they're said to have been descendants of the goddess Melusina, um, who's kind of like a mermaid goddess. They have a whole myth in here about it, and being a witch, I absolutely, like, it made me fall in love even more. Um, so, yeah, I love how Philippa Gregory, like, weaves the magic into the story, and so... Um, obviously it's fiction. We don't know a lot of things that went on behind the scenes, but the way that she weaves it in, it's very realistic feeling. It feels very like realistic to the time period and how they would have seen magic back then. And I just like love the, like the witchy undertone to it. And I found Elizabeth Woodville a really compelling and relatable character. So I'm really excited to reread this book. Um, yeah. Um, and fun little side note that I'm just going to throw in there. My mom is huge into genealogy and around the time that I first discovered this series and had been reading the white queen specifically, she had just started getting into, um, researching a particular branch of our genealogy. And she found out that at some point way back when, like 500, 600 years ago, whatever, that our family tree, actually, we were, like, related to the Plantagenets, which a pretty messed up family, so kind of makes sense, but, yeah, I was like, that is sick, and there's, like, uh, the witchiness about the family, and, like, I mean, how cool is that? I don't know. I'm not bragging. I just thought that was really cool. Clearly, we're not royalty anymore, or I would have a lot more money than I actually do and not have to thrift books. So... <laughs> Moving on, um, book three, yes, book three in the series, um, in the Plantagenet series, is The Red Queen. Um, I read, I don't remember exactly how far I got because it was years ago, um, but I actually, this is the one that I read part of and never finished, and it's not because I didn't want to, um, it's because I had borrowed the book from the library and I, it did take me longer to get through, and I will say it's, it's not that it's... I didn't find it sloggy. I think what it was for me is that this book is on Margaret Beaufort, um, who was the mother of Henry the Seventh. Yes. Um, the mother of Henry the Seventh, right? And um, she was extremely religious. And so I did find her really interesting, and I actually was really interested in the book. It just took me longer to get through because of her religiousness. Um, it's not really my vibe. I will say when I am reading or even watching historical fiction, I I don't really care what people's individual religious beliefs are in the show, um, like whether I agree with them religiously or not, because I'm very aware of like the time period and, you know, the culture of whatever, right? So I keep those things in mind. And usually when I am like connecting to a character in, in like a historical kind of a historical figure. When I am researching someone like that, um, I tend to not like, it's like, I love Catherine of Aragorn, uh, Aragorn. I love Catherine of Aragorn. Um, I think she was an amazing person. Uh, same as I feel, I feel that way about Margaret Beaufort. I feel like they were amazing women, very religious. I probably wouldn't have actually liked them if I had known them in real life. Um, we probably would have disagreed on some things, but I can respect the women that they were and the steadfastness that they held their beliefs and they literally like the things that they did in their lives based on their beliefs. I just, I can find that really, um, I can find that really like powerful, right? Um, so that's kind of how I feel about Margaret Beaufort. Um, I am very excited to actually get to finish this book now that I actually own it. So yeah, um, but that's why I that's that's why I've only read two and a half of the books in the series. Um, oops, about to go out of order. Um, okay, another book in the series that I have never read, and the next one is The Kingmaker's Daughter. This one is about, oh my god, if I can even remember her first name, the Neville sister, Anne Neville 
so sorry. I mean, I guess everyone's names in this time period were pretty much all, like, the same five names. But um, I think this one is about Anne Neville, um, who is the daughter of um, the uh, Duke of Warwick. Um, I'm sorry, the Earl of Warwick. Um <laughs> All these titles and stuff, yo. So I'm actually really interested. I've heard from other people who have read all of the books in this series that this one is actually a favorite. Um, so I'm really excited to see how it goes because at least in this show, I did watch the show. Um, I think I said that. Um, but at least in the show, I found this one to, or the Anne Neville to be like not the most compelling of characters while I, I was interested. Um, she just wasn't like my favorite. Um, but I am really curious because it is going to give a different perspective in the whole War of the Roses and how it winds down or I guess like ties up, whatever. So I'm really excited to read that one because I've heard really good things. Um, the other book in the series that I have read, which, wow, I forgot how thick it is. Um, but that would be the white princess. And this is about Elizabeth of York. Um, uh, Elizabeth Woodville's first daughter. She is the one who marries Henry the seventh and is therefore the mother of, uh, Prince Arthur and Prince Henry, who would eventually be Henry the eighth. Um, I also really loved this book. I feel like, if I remember right, despite how thick it is, I actually, like, blew through this one really, really quickly because it was really interesting and enjoyable. Um, it de I don't remember all the ins and outs, uh, all the details. Like, I remember, like, historically the things that happened, but I don't remember as much about the story itself. I just remember I read through it super fast, was really inter interested in it. Um, the one thing that I remember being a little disappointed in is that she, from what I recall at least, she's not as, like, witchy as her mom and her grandma. So, um, that was kind of a bummer for me. But other than that, though, I still read this hella thick book real, real fast. Um, I'm actually like trying to double check and see. I don't think there's page numbers in this book. Okay. Oh wait, no, here they are. Sorry. Um, yeah, I guess there's like 500, it's only 519 pages, but it just feels like really dense. Um, so anyway, the last book in this series Okay, and so here's where it does get a little confusing, because if you look up online, after The White Princess, the next one that is listed is, I believe, The Constant Princess, which is actually about the early years of Catherine of Aragorn. Aragorn, why do I keep saying Aragorn? <sighs> but, um, other places that you, and then, and then it's The King's Curse, but other places you look say that after The, uh, after the White Princess, it's The King's Curse. So, I don't know. I feel like a Catherine of Aragon book, I'd prefer to read that one at the beginning of getting into her Tudor series. But, regardless. So, The King's Curse is the last one in the Plantagenet series. And, basically, this one is going over the life of Margaret Pohl, who was originally Margaret Plantagenet. She ends up becoming the... Um, one of the ladies in waiting to uh, Catherine, uh, Queen Catherine of Aragon, and it basically ends up putting her in this horrible position because she was of the Plantagenet line, plus her children, her sons, um, become like the royal heirs to the throne, essentially. Um, and the main reason that I personally really wanted to read this book is because there is a lot about people at the time thinking that there was a curse on the Tudor line. And um, I have previously, as much as I love all the witchy stuff and everything, I've tried looking into this some, and it's kind of hard to research from a historical angle because, you know, obviously we don't really believe in curses as a culture, um, but at least not anymore. Um, but I'm really excited to kind of check this out and get into that because... That's obviously what the book is about. Um, so, yeah, I'm really, really excited to finally have this entire series, you guys. Ah, look at it. Look at it. Ah, isn't it beautiful? Okay, so um, the other books that I have acquired that I am really excited about. Um, so if you're ever in Chicago, check out Myopic Books. It's literally like 
the best thrift bookshop ever. Um, it kind of reminds me of the Weasley Burrow because there's like all these little like it's like multi levels of just used books and um, it basement all the way to like the the highest level and then there's all these little thin corridors of just rows and rows of books and I was gonna try to record some of it for you guys today when I went um, but unfortunately um, Saturdays are apparently their busiest days because it was packed um, I could like barely squeeze around to like find anything so um, but I did luck out and I found another Philippa Gregory book that I have never read in my life. Um, I have read probably more of Philippa Gregory's Tudor novels than any of her other books. I think probably the first one I ever read was the Boleyn, not the Boleyn Inheritance, that's what this one is. Um, the other Boleyn Girl. Um, which honestly is probably my least favorite version of that story ever. Um, I enjoyed reading it from like more of the perspective of uh, Mary Boleyn, but I didn't like how it portrayed Anne Boleyn. And I am a huge Anne Boleyn freak. I love Anne Boleyn. I research the crap out of her. Like at least once a year I go in an Anne Boleyn rabbit hole and stay there for a while. Um, so I didn't really like how that book portrayed her. It really upset me. <laughs> um, but whatever. This is not about that. So I have never read The Boleyn Inheritance, which is about Anne of Cleves, um, Catherine Howard, and Jane Rochford, which is the, uh, she was the woman who married Anne Boleyn's brother, George, um, and was kind of the downfall of both of them. So um, I'm really, really curious. I'm especially curious to read the Catherine Howard bits. I've never read, I'm, I'm, I'm finding myself more intrigued by Katherine Howard the more that I, I don't know, in, in recent years, I've been getting more interested, I don't even want to say years, <sighs> whatever. Recently, I've been getting more and more interested in Katherine Howard, and I want to read more about her, so I'm actually really excited that I found this one. Um, I just think that there's a lot more to her story that I want to find out about. Um, so moving on from Philippa Gregory, um, I have never read anything by Alison Weir, but I've heard a lot of good things. I have a book by her coming in the mail. Actually, it was supposed to be here today. I guess it's not going to be here till sometime next week now, but it is one of her six wives of Henry VIII fictional books. Um, of course I ordered the one on Anne Boleyn. Um, yes, I should have started with Catherine. I am aware, but again, I love Anne Boleyn love her. Oh. I just, I would have loved to know her in real life. So anyway, um, but while I was at my Epic Books, I found um, only one of the fictional books by Alison Weir, um, which is A Dangerous Inheritance. And this is about um, basically the sister of Lady Jane Grey, who was and I think the reason I'm struggling to, um, one, not having read it yet, but one reason I'm struggling to explain who this is about is because this is kind of, it looks like it's jumping around in time a bit to, like, the end of the Plantagenet, like, the downfall of Richard III, and then to, like, right after Lady Jane Grey is executed, which is, like, between 1483 and 1554. So, I don't know. I've never read anything by Alison Weir so far. I've heard nothing but amazing things about her as a writer. I do feel like this is going to be a little confusing for me going back and forth like that, but I think once I actually get into it, I'll be able to follow it fine because I'm very familiar with all of this history. It's just reading the blurb on the back here... It's not the most helpful blurb I've ever read, um, but that was the only fictional book by Alison Weir I was able to find, which is totally fine. Um, I am going to check it out eventually, although there are a lot of books by her that I am finding out. The more I look up Alison Weir, the more I'm like, oh my god, I want to read all of you. Okay, now. The last book that I found is actually a nonfiction, but it was the first one that caught my eye. And I know, again, I've been researching Alison Weir, so I know she writes both fiction and nonfiction. Um, so I'm really glad that I decided to check out some nonfiction um, books as well because they have, oh, my thrift bookstore has so many of her nonfiction there, and I had a really hard time 
not spending all of my money. But, of course, I had to start off with this one, The Six Wives of Henry VIII, because as much as I love all this other history, and there's so many other fascinating people, and I wanted to get her book on Elizabeth I and her book on the princes in the tower and all of these things. Really, what started all of my love of this kind of history in general was The Six Wives of Henry VIII. Ever since I was in, I want to say like fourth or fifth grade, maybe even earlier when I first got introduced to this segment of history, Anne Boleyn is the one who really, like, Henry VIII, I was like, wow, he had six wives and it like really pulled me in for some reason. I was like, why? What, what happened? He beheaded some? You know, it's fascinating when you first hear about it, kind of shocking. Um, the whole Anne Boleyn story like sucked me in from the first time I ever heard it. And so, yeah, I'm really excited to read this. I've actually never read, like, aside from actually taking historical or classes, um, you know, in high school or college or whatever, I've actually never read a nonfiction book on Henry and his six wives. And I don't know why, but yeah, I am really excited. This also has um, like really nice. It's, this is like practically a brand new book and I got it at a, at a thrift store. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but it has all these like actual like photos and like art. There's my girl. There she is. Oh, love you, boo. Okay. So this video is probably long enough. Um, but yeah, this is like the biggest book haul I have ever had in probably my entire life. And like I said, aside from one of these, I just acquired all of these recently. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited, y'all. <sighs> Thanks for being here. Like I said, I have my Alice in Wonderland Twisted Tale um, unbirthday review that will be up soon because I have to wrap up that book before I jump into my historical fiction mode been getting difficult but also unbirthday is real good so more on that later but anyway thank you guys so much for being here i really appreciate it and i can't wait to chat with y'all again real soon